You know, I ended up getting the client to agree to 12 months of housing. So there would be, and, and, and he was going to sell the house. Put it up for sale, sell the house, and I had him agree to 12 months of housing, you know, which basically gave him enough time to sell the home, right? And, and, it, and it, they, they wouldn't do it. Actually, he, it, they did do it. They did do it. And uh, he accepted the job and ended up taking a counter off. He's not, he's, not on my, he's on my good list right now. <laughs> he's going to get it. He's, he's, I'm still friends with him. Yeah. All right. How do you qual qualify recruiters? Right here. How long have you been in the recruiting field? Ask that question. Recruiter comes to you, ask that question. What is the average placement fee? It's a fair question. If they, if they can't answer these questions, hang up the phone quickly. Hang up the phone. Just quick. Um, how many placements have you made? Last year, this year, this quarter, this month, just qualifying questions. What percentage do you charge per client? So it's a fair question. Um, who are your client companies? What's their niche? What do they do? What's the what's what's your focus? What's what are we doing here? Um, what class type level of person do you recruit? Are you, do you recruit junior engineers? Do you recruit new grads? Do you recruit uh, VPs? Do you recruit you know? And so if a recruiter says I do everything, hang up the phone, hang that phone up, and go to the next one. In this day and age, you gotta you gotta be focused. It has to be focused. Again, this is my opinion. Um, but I don't see a lot of successful recruiters that aren't focused. Um, ge ge geographic location? Do they specific on a focus area? Southeast, Southwest, San Diego only, Southern California, whole nation, um, you know, whatever. Um, certifications, degrees. Um, ask about that. Are they involved? Do they have certifications? Do they have degrees? Um, and the number one question is. Asking this, do they love their job? If you get a recruiter, you ever work with a recruiter, ask them, hey, do you love your job? And just be totally quiet and see what they say. You'd be amazed. A lot of fumbling going around. On that, on that previous one, I, I have heard that uh, some advice was given to me about, you know, not obviously it's, it's a matter of if, are you client based or yeah. customer based, yeah. but had to do with, um, you know, are they going to work, are they going to apply? Or jobs, or look for jobs for me that I want, as opposed to broadcasting my resume. Uh, I had heard, you know, examples of where uh, the headhunter would effectively just, you know, takes the resume and anything that's close, boom, it yeah. goes out. Yeah. Which is really not a whole lot that. better than yeah. than just going on to Monster.com or whatever, right? Yeah. The intent is to kind of, yeah, you know, vector you into the jobs where that. You, know, yeah. you, you would like that's going to be they're consistent matched. with your salary they're, they're expectations. Yeah. I do. I do. Uh, I do a long interview with people. I spend uh, if it's not face to face, which this day and age, I got people all over the world. Yeah. You know, not the world, the nation. Yeah. And and but uh, it's um, I in a candidate um, centric marketplace. I want to spend time with you. I want to find out you know what what you like, what you dislike. And I'm gonna find out what geographic locations you want, and, I, and we're gonna talk. We're gonna start companies together. Yeah. See, what all, a lot of times what I'll do is I will give the candidate a task to go ahead and say, "Hey, in 48 hours, let's reconnect and call you 12 o'clock on Wednesday, and uh, I want you to tell me what companies you want me to present you at." And so there's there's a, yeah. a, a mutually benefited buying. Do you understand that? And so if a candidate does that and they spend the time, I'm working for them. You know. I'm working for them. So I just want to give you guys some ideas about fees. Um, uh, so things you should ask about recruiters. My name was Wet. Um, I I would I would recommend asking their billings, their average billings. You know what what they've you know done in the year. You know. Um, so so this is direct perm placement. This is not temp staffing. I did temp staffing for the first five years, and that you know I I build out millions. In, in, in that, but you got to remember, there's a you know a markup and all that stuff. This is just you know thirty thousand dollar fees or twenty five thousand dollar fees times how many placements I did in a year. So you know if a, if a recruiter tells you doing one hundred fifty k in billings, um, you know could be a young guy, girl, you know learning the business. You know if they're sharp and bright. You know it's, it's still worth it. I would say the average is in the one hundred fifty to three hundred k billings in an annual year. Um, 300, 300 to 500k. If they're if they're billing that, that's somebody you want to talk to. Someone's that's someone's hustling, really really hustling. And then 
you know, someone, you know, in, the, in this, uh, this is this is someone that needs to be on the top of your roll Rolodex <laughs> right here, and that they build over a million. A lot of times the people that build, build over a million, uh, and I personally haven't, um, is they got a couple admin, and they got a junior recruiter too, that are doing the hustle for them. So they're they're at that million. They're probably they're paying probably a quarter of a million in, in salaries and fees, you know, and admin support and, and stuff like that. So Lonnie, I think with these numbers here, the next one needs to be how to become. Ah, <laughs> Lonnie's gotta be one of those. Uh, so I just want to talk about some of the social sites, social sites that I use. Um, YouTube. Um, I'm gonna throw out some statistics a little in, in a second. How are we doing on time? Are we doing okay on time? Well, how about maybe five more minutes? Okay, I'll, I'll go fast. Um, I'll just slam. I'm almost done. So it's okay. Um, YouTube. I use YouTube. Uh, 100 million videos are on YouTube right now. And um, it's just completely, totally powerful, powerful. LinkedIn, if you take one thing away from today, go get, and you're not on LinkedIn, get on LinkedIn. There's no reason, I don't think anybody should not be on LinkedIn. It, it's hooked up to every single industry in the entire world. It, it, and, you know, and start building your network. Start building your network, start making connections. And then, you know, joining groups. Anyone know about Twitter? Does everyone know about Twitter? Do you use it? Anyone use Twitter? Uh, okay, that. it's a microblogging uh, function. Uh, it's, it's, I would say it's more social, um, but, I drive um, 35% of the traffic to my website from Twitter. So I got 3,500 people that follow me on Twitter. And so I'm constantly putting content on Twitter. And the idea is I want people to go to my website. And if you guys know anything about system engine op optimization, Google likes people hitting your website. And so when somebody searches for recruiter, Temecula, San Diego, more than likely I'm going to come up in a search. So the idea for me with Twitter is to be social, but also drive traffic. Um, Facebook, um, everyone. What do you, when you say you're throwing stuff out, Contents. give it a kind of, give yeah. an example. So the things that I like are. And how often? Yeah, yeah, I probably put uh, eight or 10 tweets a day, a day on average, a day on average. And so my, my, my thought process with Twitter was, okay, I'm only gonna put on content that, that things that I have passion, you know? So, so obviously, I'm putting a lot of content with with um, business recruiting. So I have all these sites that you know throw stuff at me. I'll, I'll tweet an article out there, right? I'll, I'll I'll tweet about relationships. I'm very into my wife and kids and stuff like that. So uh, things like that. I'm into sports. I coach. So I'm putting stuff like that out there, you know. And probably the higher percentage is going to be on business because ultimately I want people to see the see the content. Go wow, this guy's you know knows what he's talking about, or at least acts like he's not what he's talking about. And then, and then there's a link on Twitter where you can it'll throw you to your site. You know what I'm saying? And so again, I want people to drive to the site. Google likes me. You know what I'm saying? And I'll get up, get up higher in the ranks. Zoo info. Anyone know about Zoo info? Oh, you do. You know Zoo info? Um, I just recommend looking at it. Uh, if anyone wants a slide deck, I can just email it to you. It's in that one right there. But I would definitely use that. Hoover's is very similar to uh, Zoo info. Plaxo is, is similar to I would say Facebook or LinkedIn. You got Plaxo on it, no? And then, and then Google. There's a ridiculous amount of free, free resources. What's up? Google is the most amazing tool. Yeah, yeah. I've seen in, in decades. And decades. it's all free. I mean, it's just it's amazing. There's so Google. It, Google has one of all of these for for just on Google. You could just just do Google and not do anything else. There's a million things, but these other sites are better, um, better ran. Better 